I grew up in Canada and they used to talk about all their welfare programs, right? And I was going, hold on a second, let's change one thing. You have to defend yourself from North Korea tomorrow. Go! <laughs> oh shit, eh? Here's my question of the day. I'd like to hear you comment below. Wh where do you stand on, on NATO and the United States involvement? Of course, Trump's recent actions. Does the US have any part of NATO? Uh, it, does, it have a, does it serve a legitimate purpose, unlike the UN? In 2018, let me know. I do think that we should, but I think people need to be upholding their end of the bargain, and I don't think we should be in the UN at all. So. To set the stage, the media, of course, has responded to what Donald Trump has said regarding NATO and people paying their fair share. Um, they say that all this is something, 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 Russia. He is still spouting Moscow's line. So when he goes to the Swedes and say, oh, you're not a member of NATO, but you participate from time to time, and the United States should be like that too, he means it. The Russians have told him that. You they couldn't did. script this week better if you were Vladimir Putin. Because uh, what he wants above anything else <laughs> is the collapse of the Western alliance. Divisions within like NATO. Like his whole world, world collapsed. <laughs> he is doing <laughs> the very thing that Vladimir Putin <laughs> would <laughs> want a, 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 a Western leader to do more Senate. than anything else, and that is to undermine NATO. He could not be doing Putin's bidding more effectively if he were an active agent of Vladimir Putin and the KGB. <laughs> I like he that. couldn't do it more effectively if he were actually Putin zipped up in a Donald Trump skin, acting <laughs> like Trump when he's still Putin, and we had that fact-checked by Snopes. Here's what President Trump actually said about NATO. It's very sad when Germany makes a massive oil and gas deal with Russia where you're supposed to be guarding against Russia and Germany goes out and pays billions Somewhere. and billions of dollars a year to <laughs> Russia. So we're team. protecting Germany, we're protecting France, we're protecting all of these countries. And then numerous of the countries go out and make a pipeline deal with Russia where they're paying billions of dollars into the coffers of Russia. You know, we're protecting Germany, we're protecting France, we're protecting everybody. That's you again. And yet we're paying a lot of money to protect. He's right. He's right. Now, unlike the UN, NATO serves a purpose, especially if you look at, you know, you look at what happened, the, the encroachment in, in uh -huh. Europe. And, you know, again, kind of some people got it wrong back then. Uh, but like all agreements, the contract is only as good as the parties who've signed it. <laughs> And upon signing their agreements with NATO, all mem you're talking about members, countries, contributing countries, they were required to pay at least 2% of their GDP for defense. Almost none of them have met that. By the way, hit the notification bell or subscribe to Mug Club for the Daily Show if you're subscribed and you haven't already because apparently subscriptions on YouTube mean nothing. So hit that bell. Um, so what have these countries been paying? You curious, Courtney? I'm going to say, I'm going to go with very little. Very little. It seems a little, you're painting with a little broad brush. Good thing we have someone from the worst country in the history of man <laughs> here to fact check. Canada is 1.3%. France is doing pretty well, actually, at 1.8. Good for the French. Sorry about Joan of Arc. That was a screw up. Germany, 1.2. Belgium, 1. Uh, 0. 0.9. And then actually the only country, this is what I find so funny, and it ties into the major point. Luxembourg, the only country with a higher average income than the United States, at 0.044%. Uh, well, yeah, you can, you can provide anyone with universal income if you don't have to pay for your own crap. In contrast, the United States, we pay close to 4% 4%. of our GDP. Fun fact, at 2.4%, Greece pays the second most. I know. <laughs> the last they can't afford year. anything. What are they protecting at this point? Uh, no. <laughs> we, we are protecting our protests. They're always protesting in the streets. We think they have that right. Mamma Mia 3 is on its way. Yes, Mamma Mia 3. Is Pierce Brosnan singing again? God, please tell me he's not singing again. <laughs> but there is a tax credit for Mamma Mia 3. You don't understand. So this, by the way, is all after. This is after they've upped their spending under pressure from Trump. So it was worse before. So why have they been paying so little? And this is why I think Donald Trump is, is absolutely correct. Mm. He didn't go, first off, the Russia thing. You don't go out there and slam people for doing business with Russia. What, what is it? Is he trying to get business on the side for his, his, uh, his real estate in Russia? We've heard that. And, or now is he, it, you've got to pick a side here. It's, this is a double secret Russian ploy. It's 8D chess. It's 8D chess. <laughs> he's saying he doesn't like Russia and he doesn't want them spending money with Russia because secretly he does and he's Putin zipped up in Trump's. Also Val Kilmer's in there. It's like Val Kilmer with Putin on his shoulders in a Donald Trump suit. It's just a Russian doll set. It's just a Russian doll set. <laughs> um, so why have they been paying so little? And that's the question. Um, it's a pretty simple answer. G General socialist malfeasance. Yeah. Some of, <laughs> some, some of the worst offenders are the biggest spenders on the welfare state, surprisingly. 
yeah, I, I, I should have sometimes used it, but it's unsurprising. <laughs> Let me do that. I'm not a big fan <laughs> of sarcasm. It's so almost as always saying it was the opposite. Uh, France, they spend, uh, I think, 31 percent. Is that it, Sven? Yes, 31 yeah. percent, Sven Computer, on GDP, uh, their GDP on social welfare programs. Belgium at 29 percent. Germany at 25 percent. And this is what always... Why? Where do you get the cash? Where do you get the cash <laughs> flow? It's like that kid who lives... You're like, how, how do you have so much cash all the time? I don't pay for anything. <laughs> it's, it's, here, give me an analogy. And this is the problem with NATO. And I actually think it's morally reprehensible. I grew up in Canada, and they used to talk about all their welfare programs, right? And I was going, hold on a second. Let's change one thing. You have to defend yourself from North Korea tomorrow. Go. <laughs> oh, shit, eh? So it, it's like saying these people in Europe or Canada, I have the nicest house in the block. I, I have the nicest house in the block, and we've never had a break-in. But their neighbor is paying for the gate <laughs> and security system and dog. And because you're not allowed to have guns, when you call, we come with our guns to, to help you because, you, you know, you suck. That's what this is. You can brag about it all you want. What kind of military defense capabilities do these other countries have? That's, I think, an important question. Um, the U.S., by the way, ranks, it's the only country to rank above Russia and China in military strength. Right, so you got the United States, and then that Belgium's down there at 68. But right after the United States, we got Russia and China. <laughs> we're the only nation that even come close to Russia in terms of nuclear power. Mm -hmm. By the way, we're not the people advocating disarmament. Another thing that probably grinds Putin's gears. Um, what well, you've been telling me some things about Germany too, yeah. with their their military. Yeah, the German military is a total basket case, BB. Like. More than more than ten percent, almost like fifteen percent of the pilots, uh, helicopter pilots, lost their license last year and had to regain it through training because they don't have the equipment to keep them trained. They have um, uniforms for for pregnant women, like comedy uniforms for pregnant women. They had to give back uh, ships to the. Are these shipyard. stretchy uniform maternity? Yeah, uniform? yeah, they, 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 they stretch, which is great news for well, obese, which is which is great news for obese soldiers too, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, so do you know the reason that we went to war for a long time? Yeah, resources and protecting the women and children. We're literally sending, using our resources to create an outfit to send out a woman with child. Two are better than one. <laughs> and also the, the numbers that between like four and ten people of the fighter fighter jets that we have, the Euro fighter jets, are, are ready for combat out of 128. Yeah, wow, well, that's great. <laughs> a, a far cry from when Hitler was uh, placing orders for airplanes that were war ready, yeah. claiming that they were for civilians. And people were like, "This looks about right." <laughs> Bring on World War Three! It'll be a fun afternoon. Yes, it'll be a fun afternoon. So can, here's the: can you blame these countries for? I don't blame. I don't blame you. I don't blame your your your, your country or my silly people. homeland of Canada for mooching. It's like a 30 year old living in the basement of his parents and then suing said parents when they ask him to get a job. And what I was trying to, I was just, uh, you know, was, mm. <laughs> it's not his fault. He's confused now, just like everyone else in NATO. It is immoral. It is a social issue. The theft that's occurring with NATO hmm. is a moral issue. Uh, t t to live high on the hog while others are burdened, specifically, not others, other. The United States is burdened with the task of ensuring your life and limb. Disarmament. I heard this as a kid, too. We just had teachers saying, well, disarmament, as though it's, as though it's a valid theory. As though it's at, at, at all a valid theory in the real world. Okay, let's, let's do this. Follow it down the trail exercise. It, it doesn't even take that long. Hmm. Take the United States away, right? You're left with Russia. China, that's it. Give it a few decades, maybe some oil-rich Muslim countries will be coming down the pipeline, and they're gonna take over the rest of the world. If we take away our ability to protect the non-violent people of planet Earth, if we remove the United States' ability to do that, what happens? We're at their mercy. Doesn't matter how much you sing. And he was shot dead. Lesson <laughs> learned. Hey there, YouTube viewer. If you like this video, I would say subscribe, hit the notification bell, or watch one of these videos playing in a box that we've personally uploaded and programmed for your viewing pleasure. The problem is now, in today's day and age on YouTube in 2018, any of those three things that you do, any of those three buttons that you click will take you directly to a Seth Meyers video. So stay here and join Mug... Get off of here. Go to loudwithcutter.com slash mugclub. It's the only safe place you can go and join.